forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Hi Chelsea, it's Chasten. I just gave you a call. I'm giving you a call from my office phone, but call me back whenever you get a chance. I can be reached at 214-586-0096 or you can call my cell phone. Talk soon. Bye. Well, I was calling once. I wanted to, or I know you had RSP, but I wanted to check in to see, are you still going to be able to come to Jorge and I kick off party next week? I should be. Let me see. Um, Next Wednesday, it's from 4 to 7 at Indie Okay, here, I'll put it in my calendar right now. I'll be there. Awesome. Yeah, well, we're super excited about and I just wanted to celebrate with everybody. Or are you still working with um, Badger Fires agent and Brian and, and all that? Are you still doing all that? Um... So like the Brian that you met is still there. Everyone else I kind of let go, and um, yeah, I mean I'm in I'm in like a good place to restructure some things, and you okay. know kind of get my partners together for the year and um, make some changes. So you know now is a, a really good good time. Okay, sounds good. But then we'll see you at our party first. All right, I'll see y'all there. Come celebrate. Okay. <laughs> hey, right. Have a good one. You too. Bye. This category is typically people who may need our services. Okay. Now this type of category, this category, the actual, the next one under are going to be our clients. So they can be current clients. And then we have past clients. And then leads. So our current clients could call and say, hey, my roof is leaking, what should I do? Or they could say, hey, are we still scheduled to close? Or um, I have a question about this document that y'all sent. Or I have a question about the process. You know, it's somebody who we're working with who may have some questions. And then there's leads. So people who may have filled out one of our internet forms or may have received an email from us. Uh, and it could contain a property that caught their eye and they want more information on it. They may be actually ready to start the process. So the leads are going to be the people that help get us uh, people's names and people's addresses, and, or not ad addresses, but the addresses of new homes and things like that? Not necessarily. So a lead is pretty much a client or a past client before they become a client. So so in the, in the customer life cycle, okay. someone starts out as a lead, then they become a client, then they become a past client. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That makes a lot of more sense though. So a lead, you know, we don't have any attachment to them yet. They may have seen an advertisement, so they're just calling, or we may have been emailing them because we got their information from somewhere. We're trying to turn them into a client, okay? So we don't have anything signed with them. They're not obligated to work with us. But our main job with the lead is to get them to start to work with us. There's a difference in CC and BCC. Do you know the difference? Uh, so when you do CC, they're going to see your name, and they'll see my name, and they'll see their name. Now the other one, that B stands for blind. It would seem natural that someone just sent this a minute ago. Let's just answer them, them, them back because Chasen wants us answering back in an hour. But remember. That hour is our stellar service. It's like, oh, she got to my email right when she came in. Right. And that's what we want people to think because they'll think just as good about that yeah. as if you responded back to them in five minutes. As far as expanding goes, how has that process been? Has it been easier than you thought or harder? Or? You know, there's some good lessons when it comes to hiring and building a team. I think, uh, you know, the two most important things I would tell people when starting a team, number one, make sure and always hire off of attitude and not skill. A lot of people hire off a skill out of pain. They just throw work at people. Uh, the problem is, is that you know everything that we do is a taught skill. So if you hire off attitude, you can teach the skill um, because if they don't have the right attitude, it's not going to work. Um, and then the second thing is, I think as far as who to hire and what to do, you need to really brainstorm on the top 30 or 40 things that you're doing every single week and figure out what are the 10 to 15 things that you need to get off your plate that don't make you the most money. Now with that comes training, systems, right? Ups and downs, and that's all part of it. But I've never met a top producer that has a team that hit it on the first go around. Everybody stubs their toe, but it's about getting better. It's about getting smarter.
Is that is that what you feel like is possibly one of the more difficult parts about having a team and growing a team, the 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 training and and Yeah, I think the more difficult part is not the training and the process, it's the mindset of the long game. Okay. To think that you can hire somebody and it'll click in, everything's good in three months, those are bad expectations for you, but also the person that you hire. It's a long play. It can take years to get a team in place, the right team, and get everything grooving. And so, you know, you want to set an expectation when you hire a team member that every 90 days they get better and better and better. But the truth is they're only going to get better if you as an individual take time to take care of them. And a lot of times we're so busy, we teach them one or two things and then ship them off and they don't do it right. They come back and we're like, oh, it's not a good fit. So it's the mindset of, hey, it's a long play. It may take a year or two or three to get a couple people grooving. Uh, the other part is you have to take time out of your day and sometimes maybe take a step backwards in production to make sure to train your team up, right? right. Because you're only as strong as your team and you're only gonna go as far as your team can go. And if you don't pour into them and lead them and train them to do things right, so they understand the game and take really good care of the clients, then you're not going to get there. It's just going to be a waterfall of hire and fire, which eventually you want to stop. Did you start to hire like out of necessity, like, oh, I'm so busy now and I need it? Or did you kind of hire and start building your, your team as the business, you know, as you knew that the business was going to come? It's a, that's a really good, a good point. So sometimes people hire reactively and sometimes people hire proactively. I think right. the first thing for me and a lot of people is they hire reactively. What happens is as they build their careers and they get better, they generate more referral partners and they generate more demand. And most of us can feel the stretch, which is the anxiety of, hey, things are going good, meaning I've got more referrals, I've got more closings. But what happens is it stretches your hours. So eventually we get to the point of like, I just can't do this much work anymore. I'm working nights and weekends. I'm clocking 60, 70 hours. And so we're reactive. We hire out of pain. Uh, the two things to remember is once you feel that stretch, make sure and try to hire as proactive as possible because if you hire the person out of pain just to do the work they might be a short-term fix but they're not a long-term gain mm -hmm. and then once you start to understand that many hands make light work start hiring proactively and, and I, I put it as when you're 75 percent as full as you could be you need to start hiring what's up everybody we are here in houston texas i'm here with my brother Chancellor and my brother Chris. Chancellor lives in Dallas with me and Chris lives down here in Houston. And we are here to come to our cousin Dende. He's um, having his album release party tonight. So dang, there is a lot of people here. Excuse me, y'all. There are so many people here. Oh my gosh. Excuse me. We're family. All right. Excuse me. So this is crazy. Wow. Yeah, we're about to check out his performance. I mean, we drove all the way down here. Y'all probably can't hear me, it's kind of loud. Jeremy. What's up, y'all? This is Din Day. Check, check out his YouTube, check out his music on i. Are you, are you on iTunes? You're on iTunes. everything. He's iTunes, on iTunes, Spotify, Spotunes, Spotify. Apple Music, Tidal, I'm gonna show y'all some clips from his performance because this is about to be amazing. that kind of difficult conversation the other day. There's gonna be some movement and there's going to be some things happening around here. I do want to introduce you to somebody. I think that that there's a way that we can tastefully do it, um, but I definitely want to kind of make that clear. I, I have never felt so strongly about something that I feel like could really revolutionize and make waves in the real estate industry like this. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. 